Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 3 of my Chrono Trigger inventory system. In the last part we were actually creating those little transforms to go through the inventory itself and make sure that we are able later on uh, to, cl to click on those or actually make them react. As well as uh, we're gonna be able to use our inventory, we were already uh, using some containers for our items we're gonna fill in later on as well. And of course we set it up all the organized pieces in here for that little icons. But as I already see I just didn't copy it. Um, the one I just, uh, yeah, just ripped it away from the panel in here. So I'm gonna duplicate this one pretty quick once again and name this one um, use select or whatever and I want to make sure that I drag this one all over by holding down the shift key um, to at least the same position or about the same position where it have to be okay so what we want to do in this part is we want to navigate through all that infos like we want to activate the info or the inventory panel only when we have selected the inventory um, piece in here and same for the equipment when we select the equipment we want to make sure that we or that we um, hide the options panel and we are able to navigate through all of that stuff in here actually the navigation for this one is going to be later on or a part of later on but currently we're gonna set up everything for this so we are able to navigate through that no matter what um, so we are actually later on also as well able to um, yeah use some equipment if we need to but for now we're gonna go into and create the inventory itself um, and start with the inventory or the options or whatever it is called for you um, yeah navigation in this case okay so what we want to do is we want to create a new c -sharp script um, but beforehand I want to create a new folder called scripts and everything according to my inventory system is going to land inside scripts and maybe you want to create another subfolder everything about inventory system inventory system like that and everything else is going to land inside this one as well and same for objects prefabs and stuff you can always go in and choose some subfolders which are holding only things about the inventory system so we later on or you later on know okay this um, is important just for that and not for interfering anything else in the game so uh, keep everything organized as good as you can okay going to my inventory system folder and create a new c -sharp script and call this one inventory let's say manager or maybe it's of type input manager i'm not one percent sure um you can rename this one or name this one to whatever you please and like okay so our inventory manager is basically handling all the possible inputs and uh, possible states Le uh, yeah, let's name it states wherever or whatever the current um, options are we are able to use um, there are a lot of possibilities how you can set the things up and how you can actually create everything inside um, so what we need of course is we need to know where the options are what the options are going to do and we need to de determine when are we in that options and doing so is actually we could create a little fin finite uh, state machine for this one so we actually know the current state the inventory manager is in uh, what does it mean um, we can use an enum for example to do so um, which is determining okay what's the current input in that particular state and what's uh, going to be happening in update uh, when we are selecting a specific or uh, yeah moving our cursor around by using some I don't know weird inputs like using the arrow keys or the joypad input or whatever you please and like and the inventory ma inventory manager is taking care of what we are currently doing and what the current option is we are in um, so what we can do once again is we can create an enum for this one and this enum is going to 
um, make sure that everything is running correctly. Well, actually, I hope so. So let's get started with that. It's going to be a public enum, and this enum is going to be um, actually our inventory states. Inventory states. You can also name this one um, option states, since this is not just the inventory at all, but also holding equipment and so on and so forth. And depending on whatever the state is we are currently in, um, we want to do everything what the state is going to let us. So we can actually encapsulate everything inside a specific state. So for example, when we are pressing the menu or the op, or we're gonna open this one, we're gonna have just the pure option state, um, which is going to be the little panel in here. This is going to be the little options panel. So we need a state for this, okay, that we know our finger, for example, the horizontal finger is not visible, not usable, and not doing anything at all. But what we want to make sure is that our vertical finger, for example, once it's going to be inside that, is going to hop to the first position and here. And um, also setting up that when we are pressing something in that particular option state, for example, pressing on this, we want to disable the options panel and want to make sure that we are able to navigate through the equipment panel. Same for the inventory. Once the finger is going to be at that point or at that position, um, and we're gonna click on that, we're gonna land into the inventory panel. So everything of that, um, w which I tried to explain in here in my uh, little markup as well, that when we are pressing on this, it leads up to this one. If we want to select this one, it leads up to the inventory panel. And we can do that with all the options later on as well, if there are any. Okay, so what we have is an option state. I'm gonna uh, create or use a big name for this one so I can see this one better later on and maybe you want to do that as well. If not, just, well, name it as you want. Okay, so this is going to be the state of options. The next state we're gonna have is maybe the equip state or, qui or equipment. This is going to be the other panel. You can also uh, name this one um, options panel. And you can name this other one equipment panel with an underscore, of course, in between, like this. Don't forget to use commas after the uh, states you're gonna create, and we're gonna have an inventory state or inventory panel. Then later on, of course, we have an inventory use order state, which means we're gonna be able to go down to the first item in the list if there is any inside the list. So we're gonna later on create that inventory system and we are able to navigate through that possible items and use all of their transforms we just created beforehand. Um, so we are able to switch those items and do whatever we want inside of that. Okay, so um, for now, I believe we're gonna keep that. Maybe we're gonna uh, use inventory underscore use and we're gonna have later on inventory underscore order or organize. Organize. Like this. There will be more states, I believe, when we are going inside and doing something like uh, equipment panel um, where, where you want to equip items or you show item info or where you um, show character info and so on and so forth depending on what the current selected um, character is in the list. So there might be more later on. Again, this is just the, the, um, yeah, the base of everything in here. Okay, since we have that enum right now and we are able to go through that options, we need to determine what the current option is and in this particular case we need to say uh, we create a new variable of the type or the enum name is in this case it's going to be the inventory states and we're gonna call that or create that um, with a small i and inventory state so this is representing just one state the cool thing about that is that we are able to select this one directly on, on start and determine where that is. Uh, another state might be an, an offline state so the or something like disabled. 
So we know in that state when, when, when the inventory is going to be disabled, then we don't show anything and nothing else is going to happen until we're going to enable this one and land basically inside the options panel to do stuff around. So disabled is going to be just kind of uh, some kind of idle, idle state in here. Now we need to determine what is going to be or what is going to happen in those particular states. At first we need some references to all the items or all the navigation pieces we're going to have. The first one is a public um, game object. And this game object is going to be our horizontal finger. Then we're going to have a vertical finger since we also have a vertical uh, yeah, movement and stuff. Um, or the vertical finger which is uh, going to be used for the equipment and inventory selection in here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to create a vertical finger. So. What we need to do, of course, is we need to populate those fields in a moment when we are going back into the inspector and drag in those fingers directly in that. What we need to do is we need to keep track of whatever the current state is. We can do that actually directly in the update loop, but I guess I don't like that. So we need to do that a bit different or maybe want to do that a bit different since update only handles whatever the inputs are. Um, so when we are in the disabled state and there is nothing pressed at all. We are not doing anything inside that inventory manager. So when it's only when it's enabled or actually in any any panel but not disabled, we are able to put in all that stuff or actually um, navigate through all that things. So I believe we're gonna create a lot of helper functions which are helping us to organize everything. And of course, uh, we need a list which is holding all the infos or actually um, the options for us. So the first one is going to be a list of type transform or a game object. I believe we're gonna take the game object, um, which is the options list. Yeah, let me just call it options list. So the options list is basically nothing else than the game objects which are representing where our vertical finger is going to be at. At the same time, it is representing an index, an integer index. So we can um, determine, since we hard code this one now and it's not going to be, well, yeah, kind of dynamic, uh, we know, okay, the option zero is going to be our equip option and that is what we're gonna need or use later on to determine where we currently are and what we have selected. And the options list is of course a new list of type game object, open close parentheses and close the line with a semicolon. So, when we are navigating through the options, when the options are active, uh, we want to inherit or actually we want to enable or disable or well increment and decrement whatever the integer is. And depending on that, we want to set our vertical finger uh, to the game object's position um, according to the list and of course store whatever that option has been. So we're gonna be able to select the correct panel Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create a little helper function for this, I believe, so we don't mess up update completely. Well, at least not at the moment. I just call this maybe options select. We only call options select when we are actually uh, have an enabled state or when we are in the options panel. So what we create is in our update loot a little switch um, which is switching through the inventory states and according to the states um, we are able to react. So let's start with that. So we're gonna uh, create the switch first. So what do we want to switch is actually nothing else than the inventory state. So we want to know what the current inventory state is and according to this we're gonna change everything. So in case the inventory state is going to be disabled well we don't want to do anything so we say colon break break means we're gonna end whatever is currently in here so this is basically just an idle state as I already explained before in case of inventory states dot options panel we want to do something so colon let this bit of space and break as well 
The next one is going to be our inventory panel. We want to do something when we are inside as well. And of course we want to end this one always with a break. There's no default state in this particular case, so we don't need the case default, I believe. So um, default is basically nothing else than just disabled. Well, at the least for the moment. Okay, before we go into that switch, we want to uh, see if the inventory is enabled or not. But since currently we have this enabled, we don't want to touch that. Well, at least not for the moment. But we can um, actually change um, from our current disabled state to the options panel state, for example, when we are hitting a button. Okay, but we're gonna leave this for now as it is. So when we are hitting or going to be inside the options panel state, we want to uh, check um, what the position of the first option is and set the vertical finger to the options list uh, first position. So once we are inside, um, also, we don't want to repeat that the whole time, except we're going to have an integer of in, or a number which is controlling the options list. Okay, and that's what we're going to do at first. We want to have an integer calling or uh, uh, saving the current options list uh, state. In this case, it's going to be a private one since we don't need this and the inspector of type int. And we're going to call it current option. So we're gonna have another integer later on as well for the inventory and I believe there will be another integer later on also for the other options we're gonna be able to, to loop through. So we need to organize all of that stuff later on a bit so we don't confuse ourselves. So the current option is usually set to uh, zero at first we don't need to do that by hand and here usually it will be automatically zero but again what we want to do is we want to set the options panel um, in the first place to whatever the options list is so we say vertical finger dot transform dot position is going to be equal to whatever the options list in square brackets current option is going to be dot and since it's a game object, we need to say dot transform the position as well. So we set this one automatically to the first position, whatever currently is inside the options list. And the options list, again, is going to hold this little icon in here. And this is updating the whole time when we are not doing anything since we are in the update loop. What we can do is before we set this, we can manipulate whatever we want to have happen um, inside the options panel and since there are a lot of possibilities we can do in here we might want to bring this all to our options select one so in this case I'm gonna pass that little in here and I only call the options select function directly inside that so again we don't mess up the complete update loop okay don't forget to end the line with a semicolon in this case and now it will always, when the options panel is going to be the active state, it will automatically or should set the vertical finger to transform the position automatically to this position. What we also want to do is we want to deactivate or set the horizontal finger to be deactivated or to not active. So we say horizontal finger dot set active to be false so we don't touch this oops uh, in brackets or in parentheses and we want to make sure that this is set active to be false since we are not knowing what the option has been where we have been before we want to set the vertical finger of course to be true so it's visible for us and usable as well Okay, so this is going to set this one to false, the horizontal finger, since we don't need this directly inside the options one, and the vertical finger is going to be set to be activated or true in this case. Okay, once again, when we are in that loop in here, we can also put in some inputs, depending on whatever we want, to switch in between those options. But also, we need to protect um, the options possibilities since uh, the options list will not have an infinite size. If 
I'm gonna press maybe a button, for example, or a joypad direction to the left or to the right, I want to navigate the vertical finger depending on the current option we have. That means if input, I'm gonna use some keyboard inputs, you can always go in and use uh, any other input you like. Get key down and I'm gonna use the key code dot a which is going to be for the left direction and the current option is bigger than zero that means we want to make sure that we don't have any underflow if this is bigger than zero so it needs to be at least one um we are able to put or actually yeah bring the vertical finger to the maximum left Otherwise, it should not react. What we want to do is we want to decrement the current option. So current option minus minus until we are not uh, bigger than zero. And also at the same time, we want to have another input into the uh, different direction, which means else if. Basically, we can uh, copy all of that stuff for the moment in here into that if statement. But I want to use the D key for the right direction. I want to make sure that the current option is smaller than our options list dot count. Okay, what we want to do is we want to increment the current option. So current option plus plus or plus equal one, you decide. Okay, so let's go to Unity and see what's happening when we are inside. And of course, we want to make sure that we don't have any errors. Um, according inside the system. Also, what we want to make sure is that we add the inventory manager somewhere in the canvas, maybe directly on it, maybe somewhere different, but we need to make sure that this is separated from the equipment, the options and the inventory system and same is not child or something of vertical or horizontal finger. So I'm gonna use this canvas. We can also rename this one to options canvas if you like to. So we know everything about the options, equipment and so on and so forth is going to land inside. I'm gonna drag the inventory manager now inside of that. What you can see the first or the current state is going to be disabled. I'm gonna set this one to uh, options panel since uh, we're gonna start to play around with that now. Also what I want to do is I want to drag the vertical finger and the vertical finger slot and the horizontal finger into the horizontal finger slot. Okay, so now we have also the options list which is currently empty. Again, the options list are those little indicators for our finger positions. So what we need to do is we need to open the options panel and the first index needs to be the equip one. Make sure you do that and put this one directly into the options list. Same for the inventory, take the inventory select and put this one into the second one. So now we have all options we are gonna have inside and when we are now pressing play, we should be able to see, well, that there's an unassigned variable for our horizontal finger. Okay, something went wrong there. So we're gonna put again the horizontal finger in here and the vertical finger in there. And I believe I saved the scene pretty quick and press play now. What we now should see is that the vertical finger is automatically on the equip panel and the horizontal finger is disabled. When I now press the D button, I'm gonna hop to the right side and I know that this option is going to be option one. When I now press one once uh, to the, the D key once again, you're gonna see that I get an argument out of range. Okay, so that means we're gonna have to implement the minus one inside the second else statement as well. Don't forget to save the script and let's try again. So again, we're gonna start at position zero. We go to the right and depending on that, we are not able to overdo it. And same for the other side, we are not able to underdo it. Since this is working now, we can actually go in and add all the um, panels directly in some kind of um, placeholders. So we can switch those panels on and off depending on what options we have chosen. So we can switch back and enable and disable the inventory panel if it's needed. Same for the equipment panel and the options panel as well. So what we need is we need to have access to all the game objects. So uh, the first game object is going to be the equipment 
panel. Next one is going to be another game object which is called options panel which is just a small one where we are choosing the options. Um, so the next one is going to be our inventory panel as well. Since I want to have this one a bit organized inside this inspector I'm gonna implement a header tag which is just going to be uh, showing us what the stuff is which is coming after uh, this particular header. I'm going to show you this one in just a second. So we say header open close parentheses and inside we can uh, actually uh, write any string and in this case it's going to be uh, maybe uh, something like panels. Maybe we want to go and pass in another header in the a line between the panels and the fingers so we can actually uh, say those are all the fingers we're gonna have in here or pointers whatever call it whatever you like you don't need those headers it's just additional so it's looking better in the inspector so going back to our options canvas we should see that there will be uh, the headers and of course our panels for the game object placeholders where we can see the actual panels Okay, as you can see now here we're gonna have that bold text which is the header of the particular region which is coming after. So what you can see it's equipment panel, options panel, inventory panel. And those are the objects we're gonna pass over right now. So the first is the equipment one, second is the options and the last one is going to be the inventory panel. Don't forget to save in between, um, so the scene is actually going to be set up like that. Uh, what we can now can do is while we are switching in between those states, as I already explained, we can enable and disable the corresponding panels to whatever we want. So for example, if we are in the option select, we don't want to see the inventory panel. So what we can do is by um, just writing down um, inventory panel dot set active to be false. So we want to make sure those uh, the, this inventory panel is not seen when we want to be in the options select. Same for the other ones. We want to make sure that we are able to see the equipment and the options panel. So we're gonna make sure that we set those to be true at that point. So equipment panel dot set active in open close parentheses you're gonna say true and the same for the options panel so options panel dot set active open close parentheses and inside of that we're gonna type in true as well so we um, actually set the vertical finger to be true the horizontal finger is going to be false since we, since we don't use that at the point and of course we're gonna go through all the inventory panels and or uh, at least for the moment all the current possible panels and set them to whatever we want them to be which also means that depending on where we're gonna start off or where we're gonna land in at first which is going to be of course the option select is going to take care of the visibility or actually um, the functionality of that particular panels in this case. The next thing is when we are um, in that point as well we can also make sure that we have another input possibility to go back for or forwards like when we are pressing an A or the B key on the on the joypad for example. So uh, we can actually use any other input we don't put or I don't put that in this else uh, or if else statement we could, could also go in and switch that but I believe uh, an if statement in this particular case is better. So if input dot get key down, I'm gonna use another get key down in this case, gonna use key code maybe dot y. If the current option is going to be equal to zero, we want to make sure that we go to the equipment panel. So what we could do is actually we just um, go into the inventory state equipment panel and in the equipment panel we just hide option panel and so on and so forth and of course make sure that the horizontal finger is working but since we don't have uh, the equipment panel set, uh, panel set it up correctly now I'm gonna skip ahead um, I just make a command in here like uh, equipment panel and what I also want to check is else if so in, in the case of uh, the same key is pressed but the current option is going to be not zero but one we're gonna open the inventory panel and close the other ones so what we can do is actually we can say our inventory state is going to be equal to the inventory state dot inventory panel so um, with setting this one we automatically leave the option select and go to the inventory panel state and everything which is inside that state 
going to be yeah performed so we can do actually the same stuff as we already have done in here and create just a new helper function for this one so we say a void since we don't return anything inventory select so when we are in that inventory select option then we're gonna have two possibilities to do um, inputs so the first one is the organize option the second one is the use and um, order option and those need to be set up for us or yeah for us at that point as well we also need to consider or actually think about if we want to keep the current option or just reset the current option um, to remember whatever the, the horizontal finger is or we just deactivate the, the horizontal finger or we tint the text or whatever I don't know to see or show the people where our current finger is at or where what what the option is where they are currently in um, I'm not 100% sure about that but I believe we're gonna go through that and decide whatever we need so what I first want to do is I copy the first five lines in here and put them into the inventory select. I want to make sure that my horizontal finger is going to be true. I want to make sure that the vertical finger is going to be false since we don't need the vertical finger right now. Also, we want to uh, set the inventory panel to be true and the other ones to be false. The next piece is actually we need to say uh, what is the input we're gonna do. Basically, we also need or use the navigation with the A and the D key. We just copy that part at the, as well. And of course, at the very last line, we want to make sure that we are updating our finger in this turn or in this frame. In this case, it's going to be the horizontal thing at a transformed position. And it's not going to be the options list because we're gonna need another options list for this one. In this case, since this is only the options list but not the inventory list, or um, option or inventory option list we're gonna need to create a new one we can actually just go in and copy and paste this one in here and I just rename this one to inventory options list which is going to hold again the world transforms about that small points where our pointer is going to yeah, be on so we're gonna have an a another private int we're gonna set this one to zero as well and this is going to be our inventory current option. I know it's going to be or might be confusing. We can use the same but actually what I want to achieve is that uh, he is remembering what the latest current option has been where the vertical finger is going to be on or actually well we have the latest vertical finger so we can easily uh, remember where we have been for example. If this is not important we can use the same but I believe we're gonna test this one out. So what we want is we're gonna change the current option to be the inventory current option. Same here, same here and of course same here and what we also want to do is we want to change the options list into the inventory options list so copy this one go down inventory options list inventory options list um, where else well also what we need to do is we need to change the current option in here to be the inventory current option in there Okay, so and that's where the system is now placing the, the horizontal finger at at the inventory's options list position wherever we currently are with our inventory current option. Okay, don't forget to save and yeah, let's go back and set up everything according to what we need. So we go to the uh, option canvas. We're gonna enable the, the inventory beforehand. As you can see, those little white points in here again are our indicators for this we want to make sure that we drag those into our inventory options list so currently it's going to be a size of zero so we increase that to, to two we can also uh, just drag the option pieces in here directly inside of that okay so we have the options panel inside we have the use select and the organize uh, I believe we're gonna rename this one to organize select as well I can actually just go to the options canvas activate that little lock symbol in here so this piece of uh, uh, yeah this uh, inspector is going to stay the same and we can multiple or multi select the organize select and the use select and drag them directly inside of this I believe you are gonna do that once again with the size of zero so I actually just drag this one directly on the name in here if you don't like this possibility you can also go and drag them directly into the slot one by one okay so deactivate the lock symbol once again 
and press play. What we should see is now that we already have set it up everything, uh, well actually I hope so, uh, the system should automatically show us the options panel no matter what has been. Since we are still in uh, or w since we have set this to be default uh, when we are in here. So we can go into left and right and usually we should be able to press the Y button to um, uh, show the inventory panel, but it doesn't seem to work. Now I believe we need to call the function of course at first because we just set the inventory panel state but we do not call the inventory select op um, yeah, function inside the inventory panel. So we do that as well. Don't forget to save and go back and let's test once again. So we're gonna have those. We're gonna press Y. Now we are in here, but as you can see, the organize is the one option which is in front. Uh, I want to make sure that I switch those and make sure that the organize select going to be the second option and the use select is going to be the first option. So we always start on the left. The last piece I want to do is I want to create a prefab out of this um, options canvas since everything which is currently inside will basically not change except the stuff which is directly in the uh, item panels, scroll ranked and spacer. I want to get rid of all the item holder game objects. I want to let you know that I will upload the complete packages um, according to wherever the yeah, the current state of the tutorial is going to be onto my website, so feel free to check this one out. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.